I think we got a bad stream here. It says bad stream. We are not receiving video data fast enough. Your viewers may experience buffering. Hmm. Buffering doesn't sound that bad. Sounds kind of good, bad actually. Bad stream here. Uh oh. It says bad stream. Now we, we are have not a receiving video data fast enough. Now we have a Your fail. Your viewers may experience <laughs> buffering. Hmm. Buffering doesn't sound that bad. It sounds kind of good, actually. Bad stream here. Oh, yes. I haven't done that one for a while. That is definitely a fail, though, in terms of production. But that's what happens when you're by yourself. It's all me. Nobody else. Nobody else dares come into my office. Hang out with me. Do this stream. Let's see. We have to make sure that everything's all set and copacetic here. Nope. There we go. Today's show is brought to you by Volume Profile. And the Volume Profile course by Trader of Futures. Volume Profile, the award-winning. Well, it's not really award-winning. No one gave me an award. But I have gotten five stars from all the reviewers. I encourage you to go take a look at those reviews. Look at the course. And this. Now, that was the old course. The old course was a fantastic success. People got so much out of it. They said that it has totally transformed the way they look at the markets. They don't have to use indicators anymore. They don't have to use any complex strategies and analysis because it's all there right in front of them. That was the old course. The new course has all of that. Plus, it's been completely revamped. New content, new analysis methods, or additional analysis methods, trade setups, order flow. It is really the balls. And on top of that, the new course, I'm offering an entry into the AI setups trade service. That's the artificial intelligence trade service. So you'll get the trade setups and you'll get access to our private trade room. And let me tell you, it is a fantastic trade room where you will get training, support, uh, additional trades, discretionary trades on top of the setups. And that trade room has had only one losing day in the past, uh, I think it's now 110 days. And in fact, last week, it traded with a profit factor of over 4.4, and we increased our portfolio by 6% all from the trades generated from that trade room. I don't know what else to say. It's a great deal. Uh, there's also a, um, until the end of this week, there's a coupon code. And the, uh, the coupon code is, the coupon code is, I think I'll put it up here. You'll get $50 off with this code, but only for this week. All right, so I think I'll put it right on the title here. You know what I'll do? I'll, uh, I'll create a new text item. New text. New text. Uh, we'll call this the coupon. Coupon VLP five O. There it is. Oh, it's way the hell up here. There we go. There it is. There is the coupon code. If you check out with that. $50 would be taken off, plus you'll get uh, one month of the AI setups, which is worth $125. That is, that's what I charge, $125 a month. That includes training 
and a live trade room. The AI setups are fantastic. Here's the really crazy part. We found that the AI setups, this is an artificial intelligence neural net that we've trained over the past five years. Actually, it's gone through several revisions. When it makes these scenarios and these setups, and then you take a look at volume profile next to where all these setups are, it, it's almost as if volume profile <laughs> is dictating these trades. It's, it's really uncanny. Um, or at least it lines up with all the, the same kind of uh, triggers that you would get in volume profile. And the interesting thing is that the AI knows nothing about volume profile. It just knows patterns. And that's all it does. So there you go. It's a super bonanza deal. You get the volume profile course, you get money off, and on top of that, you get access to the AI setups. And I can guarantee you this, there will be at least three, four, five trades in the next month. Those trades alone, any one of them, will pay for a year's service, will pay for the course and a year's service on, um, on the AI setups. So if you figure that out. So you're, what, I'm, what I'm telling you is that there'll be at least five trades. Probably, probably less. There's probably at least three trades in there out of the many that are going to be showing there that will pay for all of that. Yeah, that's about right. I would say that that's, that's accurate. So that's a pretty damn good deal. Anyways, we're going to do a volume profile market analysis. And um, of course, you know, I'm not going to be going through the entire course while I do this. I mean, that would be shooting myself in the foot, wouldn't it? But you will get a full-fledged view of how I view the markets. One of the things about volume profile, well, one of the benefits is that I don't need indicators. I do not need RSI, MACD, stochastic. I don't need moving averages. I don't need any of that crap. The only thing that I do every once in a while is I, is I take a look at certain very high probability chart patterns. And there are very, very few of them. The ones that I stick to are the top 10 chart patterns that Bukowski, well, or candlestick patterns that Bukowski has uh, done tremendous work on. And I will look at those. I will use those as kind of a, a reason to get in a trade. Um, but most virtually no other chart patterns other than the volume profile. And I don't even consider the volume profile an indicator. I mean, it is as much as an indicator as, as the candlesticks are indicators. They're not an indicator. That is the actual data, as is volume profile. It is the actual price and volume data. No different than, actually, it's um, way different than just the price chart because it contains more information than just the price chart. It contains both the price chart, price, and volume. So it's actually more than, uh, than the candlesticks. So that's, that's a really important thing to realize, that when you're dealing with volume profile, you're actually looking at the order flow. You are looking at where supply and demand is. You're looking directly at where the supply, I'm sorry, the support and resistance zones are. And you're also looking at the uh, magnitude of that, of that demand. Directly, all in just one chart that is, that is all derived from the data, the time stream data that it's coming directly from the market. That is the real benefit of volume profile. And, and once you start understanding and get, get it down, you're able to see the market structure. And from that, you can do really, really accurate predictions about how price is most likely to, to behave as it traverses um, price levels without indicators, with no indicators. And that's cool. That is so cool. That is so friggin' cool. 
How you doing, Surfing Goat? Robert Leonardo, Bob Miner, how you doing? High voltage. How are you all doing? Looking good. Oh, even, even though I can't see you. Not much is up. Everything sounds good. Oh, by the way, I noticed that there was this big hum in a lot of my, um, my recent videos. And I realized it was because of the tents back here. We had the fan all the way up. And I thought, why is the fan all the way up? It's this high velocity inline turbo fan that goes in line with all the big filters you know it's this big big ass fan like this that is in line with all the uh, the ducting and everything and uh it was turned way up and so it was making a hell of a racket so i just turned it down so it should sound a lot better right now and uh, maybe i can just bring the uh, microphone a little closer to me and uh this microphone is fairly directional but it's also pretty sensitive it's a really high-end mic okay Although the articulating arm is a little, little uh, springy, sounds springy. So Bob says, uh, your feeling last night was right. <laughs> and it was. What he's talking about is, it wasn't just last night. All day, I had this feeling that Bitcoin was about to dump. Now, has it completed its dump? Not quite, but it is certainly on, on its way a good start. I had a feeling that Bitcoin was going to dump, and that feeling came from a, a few different places. One is that it has just recently come off of a huge bearish pennant and broke out of that pennant and then started to consolidate below that breakout point. Two, that um, volatility has completely dried up. There are no shorts in the market, and there are practically no longs in the market either. There's nobody in the market. So a complete lack of interest. There's nothing propping it up. Now, it is possible that a miner could come. I'm sorry, not a miner, but a, a whale could come in and easily manipulate price up if they wanted to, but it would only last for a little bit. That happened a few days ago where they pushed it up and then it just degraded right down. That's possible to happen, but you know, it all comes down to whether or not they just want to throw millions of dollars away, because that's what it would take. So I had this feeling that it, it looked like it was ready. It was ready to come down. And so on the spur of the moment, late last night, I think it was around 1 a.m., I decided, man, I got to get on air and just talk about this and say, look, I got this feeling. More than a feeling. I even played that song from Boston, although I've been asked not to sing it. Um, and that's what happened. Bitcoin has started to degrade, started to fall down out of those small consolidations. It is now at about 3,400. It was up around 3,600, so it's lost about 200 points. I expect it to come down further. I mean, there's really, really... The greater fool theory applies directly to Bitcoin. There are, I mean, there's a lot of fools, but apparently there aren't any greater fools than the ones that are already in there to prop it up. Everyone's smartened up. In other words, everyone is avoiding being more foolish than the people who are already in Bitcoin. I don't know if that came out right or not. <laughs> Let's see. How you doing? High voltage. Good day. I need my glasses. That's why I'm staring at this. And I'm the same. I'm staring at it, but I can't read it. Or it's all like the letters are. Uh. How are the glasses doing right now? Yeah, they could use a little bit of a cleaning. These glasses already are starting to get weak on me. It cost a shitload too. They could probably just replace the um, the lens, and that will save some. But man, it's like six hundred bucks for these things. They're uh, Oakleys. Oh, that's beautiful. Nvidia got wrecked today, and that's that's a salient point in the whole parlance of Bitcoin because NVIDIA, they supply graphics cards which are largely used to do the mining 
of Bitcoin and other altcoins. And so it got wrecked today because their demand for their graphics cards has gone down dramatically as Bitcoin is failing and the rest of the altcoins are failing. They really should have thought about that, you know. You know, the, the greed got the best of them. They should have thought of the scenario where all of this would come, start come, tumbling down and they would have to figure out what they're going to do with all that lost revenue. So, yes, NVIDIA got wrecked today. I don't know what that is in terms of dollars. I haven't looked at them yet. Bob is asking, can you do a look up at volume profile for ETH? How low do you see it going? Oh, I don't know. Why, why do you make me want to look at I, I don't want to look at that. I just don't. Um, but I will. Uh, you don't get the volume profile on this guy here, so I have to go over here. Uh, this is painful for me, Bob. So painful that I have to go and look up this shit. I, I really don't want to look at it. How low can it go? It can go all the way down. It can go low. Very, very low. If we were going to equate it to Bitcoin, then I would say we could get down to the $40 range. Imagine that when ETH was over 1000 I think it was up to 1400 at one point. Can you imagine that? 40 or $50? Oh, oh, I, oh, I just feel for you guys so much. Not... All right, let's go back to Bitcoin. Screw all that other shit. And I don't know why TradingView has not been holding on. I gotta redraw everything. So I gotta do all this bullshit for you guys. Let's get the triangle in there. That's good. Like right there. I think that's it. Right there. Yes. There's the triangle right there. So we've started to break down, as you can see. What would we call that? Maybe that's a small regression channel. Do we have a regression channel here? We have a fib channel. We don't need no friggin' fib channel. Maybe there's a regression channel here. Uh, there is a regression channel. And we'll just go point to point. We can see, yeah, that's down. I mean, I guess if we wanted to, we could even go to here and say, yeah, that's down. But let's just let's just go right to here, right right where it started its demise. So we got a breakdown. Hey, we, let's use this for the flagpole too. Let's see how that looks. Let's 
That's a pretty good flagpole. Not bad. A little dark though. These colors are dark. There we go. Base, let's take a little out of that. Let's take a little out of the up. There, yeah, that's better. All right, back to you guys. Uh, Surf and Goat, the volume profile course comes with the AI setups. That's that. That is a question, and the answer is yes. And on top of it, if you buy this week and use the coupon code that is right here. Let's see, I can't see myself pointing right here. Or right there. You'll get an additional $50 off. Only this week, though. And then the coupon goes away. I think that the... Um, adding the AI setups to it is, is enough. I mean, it's way more than enough. I mean, I shouldn't do it at all. Thirty-two forty, my target for the dump says Adam. Eh, I mean, that's, uh, that's a kind of weak prediction. <clears throat> it's only a hop, skip, and a, it's not even a hop, skip, and a jump away. It's like, it's like a hangnail away. Come on, have some guts, man. City guyable. Not sure exactly what that means, but Nat Cass is low and it's freezing everywhere. What gives, Ernie? Oversupply? They really can't store Nat Gas like oil. Or they can't really store. Um, it is an oversupply. As a matter of fact, if you look at the, um, the last Nat Gas report, and we're going to do that. We're going to look at the last Nat Gas report. You'll find that uh, Nat Gas came in way, 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 way more supply than they anticipated. That would have been last week on, what, the 18th, I believe, because it was a holiday. Oh, no, it was actually on thurs Thursday. Okay, here it is. All right. So you have to actually read into the report to see why. So the um, the prior week had the uh, the reserves um, come down by ninety one billion cubic feet, and then the actual what happened this time they only came down eighty one billion cubic feet. So in other words, that's how much was consumed. Now, while that sounds like a lot, nat let's read the highlights. Natural gas and storage fell 81 billion cubic feet in January 11 week uh, to, to, two, to 2,500 billion cubic feet. The ninth consecutive weekly drawer of the heating season was much smaller than the 359 billion cubic feet decline recorded last year at this time. So last year, <clears throat> they had a decline that was four and a half times greater than the decline this year. All right? Let that sink in. So last year, we used four and a half times more gas than this year.
as well as the 240 billion cubic foot average draw during the comparable week in the last five years. So it was still even three times less than the average. All right, now you get to understand why natural gas is down. Gas stocks were back within the five-year historical range for this time of the year, but were 3% lower than their level a year ago and 11% lower than their five-year average for the period. So what it comes down to is you need to read these economic reports. Uh, you really can't see it, can you? Because my fat head's in the way, but um, there's all the data right there. That's what I just read. All right, and I get all that. From the... Um, the weekly report. So here's the weekly report from last week. But we can go to this. Let's see. Let's go to this week. There's not much happening here. Um, Let's see what happened last week. Now that was uh, two weeks ago. That was one of the reports. So last week's report was almost in line with the year before, in that it uh, it dropped. 163 billion cubic feet compared to 183 uh, cubic feet recorded last year. And over the past five years, the average draw has been 185. So it was 100. So it was still lower than the average draw. So the week before was significantly lower. And last week, one of the coldest weeks was definitely lower. All right. So there's uh, two weeks in a row where it was lower than expected or lower than previous years of and lower than the five year average for this same respective time period. What else can we find out from this? Well, let's take a look at the. EIA Petroleum Status Report. Now it's on Thursday because we had a holiday on last Monday. So this is extremely bearish for uh, crude oil. There was an 8 million barrel increase in the strategic reserves. And, you know, all of this is why um, gas is low, oil is low, natural gas is low. Everything is low. No right there. All right, enough of that. Isaac says, just got an email last night. Liquid.io exchange is shutting down. The crypto market implosion is beginning. Is Liquid.io a big exchange? I have no idea. No GPUs? Cannot mine Bitcoin. Well, they have them all. It's, the problem is that um, 
They got them all. They don't need them. And yes, they're going to ASICs. Francois Xavier Hard. Why don't you put your charts in log? I mean, with BTC and ETH, it's kind of necessary. That is wrong. That is the bullshit that you've been fed by all the other asshole, idiotic analysts out there. It is total bullshit that you put them in log. Log makes it look better and it makes you feel better. All right? That's all it does. It doesn't tell you the truth. So Francois, you cheese-eating surrender monkey. Sorry, I didn't really mean that. I don't know if that you're a cheese-eating surrender monkey. I'm just assuming that you're a French. You could be something else, though. You could be from, like, South... Who knows where you could be from? You could be from anywhere. I don't care. But people telling me that I need to put it in log, as if I don't know what log is, that somehow I'm going to see things in a better light. Yeah, you will see things in a better light, and it will be fooling you. <laughs> You're a fucking idiot if you think Log is going to tell you any more information. Seriously. And this is tough love here, man. Ernie, you're too big. You can't see the chart. Well, that might be by design, Radupara. <laughs> Mike Contra says, Ernie, call BTC correct again. Thank you very much. Best trading advice I have ever received. Hopefully, I can't exit the crypto market and start some real trading soon. Uh, well, I mean, here's your opportunity, man. Volume profile. Volume profile with the trade alerts. It's a fucking awesome deal. Awesome. Mr. Trad, some idiot is going to believe Ernie. Sell his cheap BTC to JP Morgan. Don't be a fool. BTC is down 85% from all-time high. You're playing with fire. <laughs> yes, and those people that have listened to Mr. Trad are now selling their house, living on the streets, begging for... What is that called? An EBT card? That's right, Adam. He does sound underwater and un like an underwater wrecked boy. Oh, you got in at 60. Ooh. So you can sound all high and mighty to everybody else. I have some at 60 or actually below 60. The problem is I can't find it. Not that I care. It's probably worth about... How much is it worth? It's not worth that much. Because it's only uh, half of a Bitcoin. So it's only worth about 1500 bucks. Was it half a Bitcoin? Yeah. Did you take profits at 19K? He's asking Mr. Trad. Ernie is a new Jack who missed the boat. No, I look, I've been aware and dabbling in Bitcoin right from the very beginning. I just had no interest in it. I, I didn't care if I missed the boat. There's lots of things I missed the boat on that you could say the same thing. The difference is that I could give two shits. I couldn't even give two shits. I couldn't even give one shit. Not even half a shit. I mean, the shit would be more valuable than my interest in Bitcoin because they knew what it was about. Ernie gloating again. Big, big bad gloater. What, what do people have against gloating? Really? Fuck you. How's that? How's that for gloating? Francois, no need to get angry. I never said log charts give more information. However, it is more readable, but it lies. It's more readable to what? For, for analysis? No. It lies in the analysis. It makes you l think it looks better. Adam says, I started listening to Ernie and started shorting at 9K and have more Bitcoin than ever. 
Yeah, that's that's the deal. Look, if you can use your shorting to increase your stake, that's great. Fantastic. Lower your cost basis. Yeah. Yes, I am an anti-log charter. That's right. The thing is, the difference between my methodology is that I get it right and the guys who use log get it wrong. So, like, duh. That's all I've got to say about that, you know? It was a um, one of my mentors that said to me, he goes, you know what? He goes, I don't give a fuck what you think when I know I am right. <laughs> I love that. That's a great saying. I don't give a fuck what you think when I know that I am right. You're wrong. Can you explain to me th then how it lies exactly? Like I said, it makes it appear as if you, you're in a constant uptrend by normalizing well, normalizing is the wrong word by by putting uh, the scale more into perspective uh, over the long term and it makes Bitcoin look better than it is that's how it, I mean how else can I explain it it makes it look like it's a big uptrend which is bullshit It's all, it all comes down to what the present is, not what the past is. Because it can work in reverse for you, too, if it starts going down. All right, so now we shall get to the volume profile. Today, we're having a slightly tough day in the market. We got red candles all over on the indexes. So I have this, um, according to volume profile, I thought that it should come down to either this edge line or this edge line on the E-mini S&P. Uh, I should probably get my head out of the way. This is the E-mini S&P 500, the uh, futures contract for the S&P 500. And uh, we're in this kind of consolidation zone. These arrows represent the best case scenario. We have a binario and we have a bullnario. My bullnario number one has already uh, seen through and done exactly as I expected. My bear, my bull scenario number two is halfway there. It came down to this level. I said it could come down to this level. Actually, originally I said it would come down to this level at 2590. It didn't make it all the way down there. It came up to this level, which is, again, on the edge of a volume well. Both are on the edge of volume wells. Those are the tradable zones. And... Um, and then I'm saying that after it has completed this task, so one or the other, it's going to start going up. Same basic look across all the different indexes. Now oil. Oil is following through with my prediction. And that is that uh, we should come down. See, I drew this arrow several weeks ago. Well, several, well, yeah, several weeks ago. Several weeks? No, maybe a couple of weeks ago. And uh, that was my resistance zone. It is coming down. It should meet right up about here. And then I expect it to come back up. I think it's going to stay inside of this yellow area for a long time. That is my prediction for oil. So somewhere between 44 and 54. But now it's starting to regress back to the mean. I mean, we could take a look at exactly what the mean is by using a mean channel, mean regression channel. All right. 
let's take a look at a mean regression channel, which is almost the same here. So that little middle line there, which meets up right with it just about exactly. So that's where I expect it to go or head towards. Um, it could overshoot and go down as low as 47, at least in its first leg. It could go lower, but uh, I don't expect it to. I expect it to come right around and hang around that, that mean and start filling in this volume node here, maybe making it a little bit bigger, wider, extending its reach. And then we should have a fairly healthy, wide value area. Adam says, I cannot wait till we hit 1200 on the Bitcoin and all the perma bulls are wrecked. I don't, I don't think that the perma, well, yes, a lot of perma bulls will be wrecked. But I think a lot of the institutional guys, the big whales, they're not wrecked at all. They've, uh, they've already secured their money. They shorted big time. They, used, they hedged with, with, the, um, with the futures products. They're all set. I cannot wait until we hit 2500 and Ernie is still shorting, then Bitcoin explodes. That still won't hurt me. It still won't hurt me. Because I don't take a big enough position for it to hurt. And besides, one bad trade out of what? 40? You think I'm going to care? It won't even be a bad trade. It'll be a good trade where the market turned against it. It'll be in for the right reasons, and then some random event would happen. I don't. E I can't even imagine what could possibly happen, anyways. So I, I say, fuck you on your original premise, anyways. I think that you're just full of shit, full of extra shit today, Mister Trad. Really. Memphis Lindsay. What is opacis, opacity setting under number on volume profile on Ninja Trader? On Ninja Trader? Opacity setting. Uh, f fuck if I know. <laughs> and what is the opacity setting for anyways? I mean, does volume profile overlay all the charts or something? Uh, and you need to be able to see through it? I don't, you know, and I don't care. And I do know that there's some fairly good volume profile tools on Ninja Trader. Uh, most of them you have to pay for, I think. Sorry, Booger, short every rally. Ernie, what do you think about a gold short around 1308? Well, I don't think gold is going much above that, so I guess that answers your question. Yeah, I know it's a parameter for the uh, volume profile on Ninja Trader, but first of all, I don't trade Ninja Trader, and I don't have that particular indicator to be able to advise you. So I have no idea what the opacity setting does. I, I mean, I have an idea what an opacity setting does, but not in the context of a an indicator on a, that I've never seen on a platform that I have never used. Well, it's not true. I have used it, but very briefly, only to try it out few years back so sorry Memphis Linz I can't help you Lindsay now one thing I want to uh, let you all know if you haven't noticed the channel is starting to grow people are starting to come in they're saying hey So please hit that like button. 
right now. I'll wait. Still waiting. Yeah, we're up to 2152. So soon we'll be at 2200. And then on our way to 2500, then 3000, then 5000, then 7500, then 10,000, then 15,000, then 20,000. That's how I see it going. That's how it happened last time. I started to really pick up. Ernie, can you take a look at the logarithmic nonlinear regression chart of Bitcoin that's out there? Might need to Google it. Why? Why do I have to do this? I feel like I'm being trolled. So we'll go on the weekly chart. Can't use Gemini. We'll have to use something like um, maybe um, Bitfinex. Yeah, we'll put it on log. All right, so here's log. All right, you soy boys, dickwads. There's a log chart of Bitcoin, all right? Looks like bullshit to me. Makes it look like Bitcoin just keeps on going up. And it's only good for people that have gotten in way, way back here. For everybody else, it sucks. It means nothing means absolutely nothing. And and all it's really good for is looking back at how the old days were. There's no other use for it. This is more real life. Absolutely 100%. Oh, V. Lee has hurt my feelings, disliked me for calling the French surrender monkeys. No, I call them cheese-eating surrender monkeys. Get it right. Francois says, I'm a physicist, and we use log charts all the time. Log charts are neutral trend-wise. They don't make things look more like this or that, except for people who don't know how to read them. Okay, Francois, you dickhead. You think you're so fucking smart? You're a physicist. May I, um... Nah, do I have to pull that? So, just so you know, uh, there was a time where I was also a physicist. Actually, a practical scientist working in the defense industry, designing phased laser-based inertial guidance systems for intercontinental ballistic missiles. Also involved in material science on the vapor deposition of infrared transmissive materials for heat-seeking missiles. So don't give me your bullshit about being a physicist and knowing more than me, you fucktard. So just fuck off. I know what a log chart is used for. And I'm telling you from the real world for a Bitcoin trader, it is bullshit. That's all it comes down to. I can pull science on you anytime I want. By the way, uh, you must know that by watching me all this time that my virulent behavior, my bombacity, 
is kind of an act. <laughs> I don't really get mad. I just find it very humorous. Then why do you say it? I gave you my reasons. The reasons are that people that are living in the real world in the present time, the log charts don't help them at all. At all. It gives them absolutely nothing of value to tell them where the price may or may not be going. That's what I'm saying. It's pretty simple. Why would you do something that just wastes your fucking time? Giving you zero information. This is why I'm, you know, fooling around with log charts, fooling around with all these fucking indicators, when you could just use volume profile. Yep, just use volume profile and everything comes out dandy. You can actually see where the market structure is, where the market has found value, where it doesn't find value. That's important information. Seeing a chart go up in a, in, with a logarithmic scale doesn't help at all. At all. It, it, it provides negative information. And particularly when you're looking at a bubble, right? When you look at the pattern of a bubble and you put it in logarithmic terms, it doesn't make the bubble look as bad as it actually is. <laughs> and maybe that's why people want to, want to uh, you know, move to the logarithmic charts. So it makes them feel better. They placate their, their deep-seated fears. Because quite frankly, all that really matters is today and what may happen tomorrow. What happened 10 years ago don't mean shit. What happened three months ago don't mean shit. Except for that there may be some latent orders still in the market. And you can see those with volume profile. How you doing, Mark Burbot? Can you try Euro USD with that volume profile? Um, you can. However, it's not true volume profile. It's actually uh, working off of tick data. That's because with the Forex, there is no volume. No volume included in the time series data from the market. Um, however, I believe that, um, so when you use tick data, you're not seeing volume. You're actually seeing the transactions, the number of transactions that are going back and forth. And then it accumulates those. And uh, tick data is on average about 90% accurate to volume. So it, it's still okay. So we could do that. We could do that just for you. We're going to do that. Let's do it right here. We'll go to the Euro USD, which is Forex. And I was wrong. They do not show the um, the tick data. Up oh, there it is. So you can use the volume profile, but it's not really volume profile. It is really tick profile, but it's still useful. But, I, but it's important that you understand the difference.
Ah, Mark Burpaw says, how are you? You're having a great, you're having great joy seeing this dump. My dad says you're on point last stream. <laughs> Your dad must be a smart guy. Is volume profile typically a fee-based service with most brokerages? Unfortunately, that is true. Uh, with some brokers, they may have uh, a tool that will include volume profile, but for chart services, like uh, for most charting services, it's something that you have to pay extra for. Uh, some brokers may not even include it. I do know that um, Sierra Charts does include a very good implementation of, uh, of volume profile with their platform. But of course, the platform costs money, and then you can use it on a number of different brokers. So uh, volume profile has been more or less hidden from the public or made a premium service. In other words, they paid a, an, an additional charge, um, mostly because they know that most people aren't going to use it. They're not going to be familiar with it. And that's all by design. It's a professional tool. The professionals use it. That's why the professionals make money and the retailers don't. But with, um, with TradingView, it's not that expensive. $14 a month, and you have volume profile. And it's a pretty good tool. I like it on TradingView. It works very well. Uh, no, that does not go the same with futures data. Futures data has volume in, in the feed. Right? So the market data that comes through with futures does have volume data, just like equities. So you're getting a, a very accurate representation with futures. So if you wanted to see the euro dollar a, as a futures contract, you could do that. I believe that um, the futures contract for that is 7E up here. Is that true? Or is it 6E? Uh, we got to go to futures. No. Oh, it's E6, Euro Futures. So here is the exact same um, Forex cur currency but the futures version. This is the futures of the Forex. Forex is the actual uh, asset, the actual commodity. It is the actual currency. And then um, this here is the futures contract based on that currency. Now, uh, interestingly, it doesn't actually deliver the currency. It delivers cash, whatever your native cash is. I guess you you know if you wanted to you could get delivered euros. So only forex is tick based. Well, it depends on the platform. Uh, you may get to some platforms that don't support tick base, and you get no volume with forex. Or, or any simulated volume. Thanks, Jacob. Yeah, yeah, I knew it had an E in there. It was easier um, with TradingView. It's easier just to type in the uh, mnemonic or the actual name, and then it will bring it up. It has a pretty good search function. Seven is the micro. Well, let's, let's check that. Uh, it says the CME. It doesn't say it's the micro, though. It just says the current contract in front. Um, I'll tell you what the micro is, because I have, I have it on a spreadsheet. The micro version would be uh, one-tenth the size of the mini. So I'm bringing it up on a spreadsheet to see if we can find what the micro is. I don't know if there is a micro or not. There's not a micro for every um, currency. 
futures contract. But I do believe there is one for Euro. Yes. So it's M6E. <laughs> you got it as fast as I did. Micro can be M6E. Uh, yes. Well, I think that we could probably put in M6E. Let's try it. ME6. M. E. No. How about M six? No. I don't know if they have the micro. Let's see if they have it under Euro. The Euro mini futures, but that's the same thing. Oh, maybe futures, futures mini. Well, could be the terminology here. I think when they are saying the futures and then they say futures mini that they're really referring to micro because that's so confusing. I know that, you know, Jacob, that's the problem with these platforms. You never know which platform is giving you what, and they're all different. Between TradeStation, Thinkorswim, and Interactive Broker, those are probably the biggest. And then many other platforms, they, they all seem to have their own. Thinkorswim seems to be the closest to what um, the CME actually specifies as the symbol. Ernie, you were talking about Boston's more than a feeling on your last video, and now it's a suggestion on my YouTube app. <laughs> That's cool. I loved Boston. I still like I still like them. I mean after a while, you know, there are certain bands that, you know, you could just listen to them forever and their variety is just it seems infinite and um you know the beatles were that way i mean the beatles you could just listen to them forever they never seemed old and the the range of music that they produced was unbelievable boston is pretty much monolithic <laughs> all the boston so songs basically sound like the same song different variety di same era um and it never really changed that much Still good music, though. Still damn good music. A lot of great bands came from the Boston area. A lot of people don't realize that. A lot of great bands came from here. I wonder why. Maybe, uh, and, I, and I think a lot of them probably had... Um, UK roots so they or European roots so they came over here first before they could get out to California all right so how long have we been on oh my god it's been an hour and you know how I feel about being on for more than an hour 
Being on for more than an hour just isn't good. All right, so everybody, everyone that's here, I'm tasking you with something. You must go down, click that like button right now. Click the damn like button. Later on, come back, leave a comment. I would love to see that as well. And then share this video. Very important. We're trying to build this channel up. Also, I'm going to remind you that we have the Volume Profile course, which is brand new. Brand new, more content, more advanced content. Plus, as you can see right down below here, we have um, a coupon code for it. Get $50 off and you will get one month of AI alerts and access to the AI trade room so you can get live support. There's no better deal than that. So you'll get live support for both volume profile and for the AI service. It's a great trade room. Uh, very active. Uh, here it is right here. Let's see. No, that's not it. This is it right here. People in it all the time. Viva la France. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Where is that stop streaming button? There it is.